Welcome to this very special edition of Flavored Enemy, Ever Realms, The Dark City. This is a special 10 episode series that deals with graphic depictions of body horror, violence, and suspense themes. As such, it is recommended only for mature audiences, and listener discretion is strongly advised. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy The Dark City. These next moments you are about to experience here in the Dawn City are dark, foreboding, grim, and gory. If body horror, macabre situations, or gore are not things you are comfortable with, I suggest that you find something else lucid. If you can stand to engage in such things, you are more than welcome. You are also my kind of people. And so now we begin with episode two of the Dark City, Feel Flesh. We begin with our, well, it's too ridiculous to call them heroes, so instead we will call them victims. All gathered around a small, ever-burning tree in the spiraling block, trying to get some modicum of rest in a realm of necromantic dark energy. The first to wake is Prism. Looking around at your surroundings, Prism, you see the ground underneath your feet in star riddled the flesh. The rivers run red with blood. And your allies cling around each other, desperately huddled around this flaming tree. All but one. Everywhere you look, you cannot find them. Your missing ally. They are nowhere to be seen, and you fear that they are lost, lost to the spiraling black. What do you do? Prism is sitting right now, kind of just scanning their surroundings, not sure if she can trust any of the people she's met recently. Um, and who, who did you say was missing? You are missing your enemy. The one who, well, thought themselves the center of attention. Even for you, the name grows thinner on mine. As if this place that you are in is stretching. Stretching every ounce of mental capacity that you have into thin, wispy vapors. I think I will try to find a place not terribly far from my new traveling companions, maybe 20 feet or so, and just get in a kneeling position and not pray, but do some light breathing and do my best to remember my training about pushing back the encroaching darkness around us and trying to find even the slightest sliver of light through the crushing black. Go ahead and make me a religion check. That is a total of 21. As you are focusing your thoughts, thinking of the light within the dark, you catch a glimpse. A glimpse of a spile. Black and stone, but the black is not the stone, it's Ica coating the stone. You can see the stone in gaps, white and alabaster. It's pure. Hidden right underneath all of the Ica, you see a glow on the top of it, soft and faint, but there. You can see it, you can feel it. As you ebb closer to your conscious, you hear the sound of a bell jingling, the sound of wooden wheels turning, and as a woman speaks, you pop out of your head. Oh, um, hello. You all look hungry. As you look at her, you see this. 50, maybe 60 year old human woman 
with a cart in front of her. There's a myriad of things in there, but you can't really make out any of them. There's, there's sheep covering the top. She looks at you and... all. You can see her face is worn and grizzled, knotted and scarred. Her hair graying and matted. And she looks at you with gray pilot eyes. You seem new to here. Yes, you could say that. Uh, with whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Oh, um, my name is Elwyn. Elwyn. Well, it's a I... pleasure to meet you. Yes, I am known as Prism in these parts. Yes. Of rather ironic I... name. I am very familiar with you. Do not worry. You have no need to explain anything to me. Now, you seem hungry. And I am just doing something to me. Are you? DM, are the rest of us awake yet? It's just Prism. Well, I, I assume that your, um, your cuisine here is not quite, um, Shall we say similar to what I'm used to back home? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, yeah. She kind of pulls out a small little porcelain disc. You can see it's got a nice little uh, pie pastry top on it. Really golden brown, too. And what is inside of your treat there? It's a small top. Add potatoes and a leaf. And just where are you getting your meat from? Oh, it's, it's farm fresh, raised here right in the spiraling black. Yes, as are all of our new forms, I believe, raised here, so to speak. And that's Is a there... good one. Are you were you a comedian in the before? No, I was more of a scholar, but this realm was one of my I don't want to say specialities, but it was a driving focus for me and my companions. Oh, and your companions, might they want something to eat? I am more than willing to provide. I have plenty to spare. You could wake them up if you'd like. I'm not going anywhere. Far be it from me to take the decision out of their hands. And I will back up, walking backwards, not taking my eyes off of this woman until I'm a good you know, 15, 20 feet away, and then turn, and whoever I find first, just kind of give them a light shake. First up, first you wake up is Scree. Scree, darling, um, if you're hungry, there is somebody here willing to provide for that desire. Scree stands up and stretches, and he kind of looks between Prism and the old woman, and is like, that's oddly convenient. He decides to go forward and accept the food from the old woman with a, you know, a gentle thank you. Oh, of course. Um, are you of the persuasion to eat your food with your limbs? Or would you prefer a fork? If you happen to have a spare fork, I won't say no. Of course! And she pulls out a small little metal tin that's got a bunch of forks in it, and she holds it out to you. Thank see you, the forks are made out of, you. See the forks are made out of, like, a black wrought iron, dual-pronged, very, very old-looking. Thank you, I greatly appreciate, appreciate it. And he reaches out and takes a fork. Of course! Anything else for anyone else? Is there anyone else you'd like to wake up, Prism? Yeah, I'm just kind of making my way through the camp. Um, okay. 
So, um... I was just probably say- up probably Minowin, because I know that they've been through a lot. <laughs> So, Menowin, you're up next. Uh, Menowin's gonna kind of sit up and look around. Um, and then her eyes are gonna land on on the old woman. And I'll look over at Prism. Who's she? She claims to be... Well, not a merchant, but a provider, purveyor of food goods. I'm not sure anything here is edible, but I didn't want to stop anybody from making their own free will choice, so here you are. I wouldn't call myself a purveyor. That connotates that I am doing this for profit or purpose. I just saw you all sitting here and thought you all look hungry. What, what exactly do you have? Oh, it's just a small pie here, and it's got some farm fresh meat and potatoes and leek. What kind of meat? Oh, you know, the farm fresh raised kind. Unfortunately, I didn't speak with the butcher myself. That, that was my husband. Right. Um, DM, can I make a I don't know survival check or something to see if I can tell what kind of meat this is uh, yeah you can I'll, I'll, I'll call it a survival check yeah but, all right. can I help since I was yeah, also suspicious good. of the meat yeah sure so I'm rolling with advantage suspicious meat gonna be going inventory quotes don't like that connotation <laughs> What was your role, Menowin? Uh, oh god, it's a six. Um, it's... It's, def- it's meat. It's, 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 definite, meat. it's definitely meat. You would... If you'd had to guess, you would guess probably some kind of pork or chicken. I am going to very politely take a slice um, and a fork and then just kind of stare at it. Um, I'm just going to wait to take a bite. I'm just going to kind of stare at it, but I don't want to be rude. She kind of just nods at you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and who have we here? Naza? Um, yes, yeah, so as Naza kind of wakes up, she's probably just gripping some of her items a bit too tightly, um, notices there's a new person and people are kind of eating and just what it it is who who, who's this she has food i don't know i don't know she also has she also has a name um and i ryan have forgotten the name but prism will introduce uh the woman yes uh, sorry uh my name is elanwi elanwi uh, uh, I think I'm not too hungry, that's okay. And as Naza says this, her stomach grumbles. <laughs> and I look to Prism and um, Menowin and Scree because they're also awake. And just... What's... Um, what are we doing? Well, some of us are eating, and some of us are choosing not to partake in food raised in a realm that is known for necromancy. Yeah, it might be chicken. Idea. It might be pork. I don't know. While this well. is going on, can Scream make a subtle insight check into the old woman? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. As you're doing that, she kind of talks to you. Uh, well, I can promise you it's going to be hard to find food from here yeah. until you reach the dark city. Um, forgive me, I don't know the protocol in this area, as you said, we are new. Um, we've just come from the Tower of Bones, uh, and given our roles, may I ask what your role is in oh. this realm? 
I don't again. I don't know if that's rude. If that's rude, forgive me. No, I don't mind it. Um, I bear the honor of the title of the Flesh Weaver. Are you, are you familiar with my work? No, I'm afraid say that what? I am. Would I know that name? Um, you can make me a history check. Matter of fact, everyone can make me a history check if they like. And as you all are sitting there conversing, Delaria comes from, comes from around the corner, having uh, just needed to uh, relieve themselves. Howdy, hey, folks! Is you all there? You is everyone a awake at this on point? The history and a 16 on the insight. Okay. I got a 24 history. Okay. Um, for the insight check, it seems like she's genuinely trying to be helpful. And she's not trying to be facetious or or have any ulterior motives. She's genuinely trying to be helpful. And as far as the history roll goes, on that 24, uh, you would know that... Oh, sorry, not a 24, fever, just a 20. 20? Okay. Then in that case, you would know that the Fleth Weaver is a title reference to in she who is a crafter of flesh golems and a repairer of revenants and zombies. She is quintessentially a doctor for the undead. Uh, however, her primary focus is that she helps to weave together undead abominations. I'm gonna make my way over to Koji and just not quite wake them up yet, just stare at them a little while. Uh oh, um, sorry there, I didn't see you. Did you want something to eat? She looks at you, Delarian. You see this old woman with kind of these gray pallid eyes, like matted graying hair, and she's handing out meat pies. Ah, gladly, I'm starving. Feels like I haven't eaten in weeks. Yeah, w would you like a fork? No, thank you, my hands will do. Uh, Menowin is going to lean over and, or reach over and, and wake up Rodon. Hey, uh, there's a lady here. She she has food if you're hungry. Uh, uh, what? Food? Um, I take a look over at this lady. Oh, my there, Rodon. It's an honor to meet you. I must thank you. you. Pick that up, or how do you know my name? I must thank you. You have been truly one of my most favorite of donors. Does anyone have context here? What's happening? How do Absolutely you know none. Um. So she said she was a flesh weaver, which, I, well, I think is just a doctor for the undead. Okay, I can respect that. Um. <clears throat> have you killed many people? Oh, me? No, rode on. Oh yeah, I've killed a lot of people. Um, that might be what she's referencing. Yes, oh, yes. Good, I'm glad that made you happy. I definitely did it for you. You sent me many a healthy limb to be used in the creations that Darinzor wishes to see. <laughs> you see Rodon has a little... Uh, he was maybe a little salty and passive aggressive before, but being complimented like that, he just gets a little grin on his face. Okay. Um, I've heard about food. Oh, yes. Would you like to try some delicious meat pies? Oh, certainly. Yeah, that sounds great. There you go. Would you like a fork, Gary? I suppose. I suppose I could use a fork. I don't know if we should be giving that one sharp object. Oh, sure, it'll be all right. You see Rodon, like, his face narrows and just looks at you, Prism, and he says, think I don't already have them? That's exactly my point. You already have them. We don't really need them. <laughs> Trust me, if I was going to stab anybody, I wouldn't. Oh, then I guess you're just not creative enough. With all this commotion, Gorzic and Koji, you both awake as well. Koji, you notice Prism is kind of standing over you right now. 
I stretch. Uh, I sleep in fox form, and so as I, I'm in, as I'm a small orange fox, and I just sort of look, blink up. Hey, uh, headless one. Uh, I, food. You want it or not? Why are you watching me sleep? Do you want food or not? I'll sort of stretch out, like kind of like a dog with or a cat, more like a cat with my like like back rising, back hunches rising up in the air. And then I'll shift back into kitsune form. Oh, um, what kind of food? Wait, do we even need to eat down here? That's, um, do, do I feel hungry? Only someone who's never been hunted would ask such a silly question. If you're offered food, you take the food. You never well, know when your next meal is going to be. Well, the way I see it, food is, food is necessary for life, and, um... We're well, dead. Considering. Matter of fact, you all do feel hungry. Like, a thousand worms at the bottom of your stomach have been eating away at every single ounce that you might have had in there before. Every ounce of energy in your limbs retracting the very core of your being, as if all the energy that you have left to muster is only keeping your organs functioning. If that is even necessary anymore, it's hard for you to truly tell whether or not you do need to eat. But you feel hungry. What do you all think? Do we need to act like we're living to stay living, or do we need to not eat the food of the undead to keep from being undead? They're not fairies. I think it's pretty delicious, but I understand why you might have reservations. Anyone know what kind of what is in this stuff? Meat it tastes like potatoes and leeks. We don't know what to do. Can I make oh, a e survival check uh, with my knowledge of all the different uh, bad meats I've eaten over the years? Sure, go ahead. Uh, it's an eleven. It's meat. Mm -hmm. You can ascertain that it's probably of a of a serpent or lizard or, or draconic sense with the way that the, the meat tastes is a bit of flame kiss char to it hmm. well it's probably not one of your friends can Scree attempt a survival check as well sure go ahead can uh Gorzich wants to look 14. past sort of past the meat pie and at the old woman and see sort of if she has any sort of underlying ulterior motives. Yeah, sure, make an insight check. Sure, 14. Once again, she seems genuine, like she's truly trying to look after you all and care for you. In an area where it has been scarce, it's welcoming, inviting, enticing, because to be cared for and taken care of in a place so dark is respite amongst tragedy. I suppose, uh, if we're gonna die, why not die faster? And I'll, um, take a pie. Same. And she is a doctor, and Naza will also take a pie. Not, not even, not breaking eye contact with the, the old woman. Gorzich will reach forward and herself. Now, I, I, I must ask, you are planning on making it to the Dark City? I suppose uh, that's our destination. Yeah, I will also that's before grab plan. one grab a pie and give her a little bow. Uh, do you know, I, I guess we're not fully alive right now. Um, oh. do we mean to eat? Um, well, you are technically still alive. The time it takes so it is necessary for Spiraling Black to change you, that's your true death. Oh, so you mean like if we've already transformed into some sort of other creature? And you're getting closer and closer to true death. Prism just eyes Koji. I will, um... Mm. Yes, I suppose. Well then, to sticking it to daddy's ear, and I'll shove the meat food into my mouth. It actually tastes really good. Like, really warm and comforting. And I would like each of you to take 1d6 temporary hit point. 
Do we have to call him that, or? I think we can call him anything. Yeah, I, I, yeah he's a he's a douchebag. I'm doing it to make fun of him. I mean, you're a little past insulting him here. You've already become his bitches here. I think douche that suffices. That's yet to be seen. If Darren Zor wants to own my soul, he can march down here and ask politely on his knees. Oh. Now, I may belong here in this wretched place for what I did in life, but I never sold my soul to a devil. <laughs> Darren Zor's no devil, but I don't mean to get off point. My question is, will you all take the fields of flesh? Or the river of blood. Those are the only two paths from here towards the dark city. Well, which one do you recommend? You seem like you're a well-traveled person. Do you have any advice for us? Well, my sense and my husband, we uh, bend to the fields of flesh. So, I am partial there. Of course, as it is our land, we do require a toll to cross a bridge, but traveling the river of blood usually connotates more than that. So I think it's a bit fairer to travel our way. That one's fair. How much is the toll? Oh, we have to pardon me. I don't get often a chance to use this, but it does cost an arm and a leg. Um. So I've already the, lost the, my the, leg. I, I think I, I think I'll pass. Thanks. How about all the arms and legs that I sent up to Daddy Zur, as it were? Now, when you say it, Rodon, it is really quite disturbing. Oh, yeah. I don't like saying it as much as you don't, but <laughs> I wasn't the one who started it. You all are free to negotiate with my husband if you'd like. But, oh, as shit. far as the general terms, it's an arm and a leg for each group. For each group? One arm, one leg? One arm, Literally. one leg. Does it have to be our arms and our legs? No. Yes. So you're feel free to gather it from anywhere here at the Spirally Black. Now, we are in the fields of flesh. Is it possible that we might be able to find some uh, donors for said arm and leg? Oh, absolutely. You see, the accursed of this land was found before Darren's was vast hordes. How strong does she look? Nine, the city. She looks very frail and weak. Can I, can I can I roll an insight to see if I can tell what Rodon is thinking? Ah, uh, sure. Make an insight check. I'll make a deception. Go for it. That's, oh. that's a 19, Rodon. Congrats, you have one of my characters that has a charisma dump. <laughs> He's sizing her up. Uh, he definitely is thinking about just murdering this woman. Koju will clock Rodon's contemplation. And we'll shoot a look over to Prism. And that's it for right now. <laughs> Venom is going to kind of take a step forward um, to the woman and, and ask her, if, if we go your way, is there a different payment that could be made? Well, I would be happy to take them with my husband. He's the one who sets the prices. You've already subjected many people to suffering when we climb the tower. Are we just going to have to keep doing it more and more the longer we're here? That is the name of this game here in the Spiraling Blade. Do you know what the toll is at the River of Blood? Oh, there's no toll at the River of Blood. No, there's a group of skin sturges there that, well, they... I guess, in a manner of speaking, exact to their toll when you pass by. Skin Sturges? Are those yes. anything like the Sturges of the Jungles? Uh, yes. similar. They are like vultures, hooked talons of their feet. They mm. remove skin 
in a very clean cut fashion. I do have one that I've trained to be able to help with the flaying of what's necessary. But these ones are wild and prefer to just, well, gather it for nest building and eating and such. Um, if we kill your bird, would that give us passage? Oh, no. My bird doesn't have an arm or a leg. I don't know I about the rest of you. You're a breach girl. I don't know about the rest of you, but I would rather take my chances on the River of Blood than you lose another limb. I'm rather attached to them. Uh, I, I think agree. if we go to the River of Blood, we're risking losing our entire skin, Minowin. So oh. we fight back. I don't... Which way would be quicker? That's true. Well, assuming that you can take care of the skin, Sturges, the river of blood is still rife with parasites and has a flux current. Unless any of you can walk across the water or fly, it might be a little difficult. Is speed mm. even a matter of concern for us? I think the longer we stay here, the more we become his... What was the word he used? Bitches? Yes, that's the word. I'm gonna make daddy my bitch if it's the last thing I do. Here, here. Re kind of shuffles forward with his head bobbing in a bird-like manner. Um, uh, ma'am, would you be willing to give us a ride to the city of, um, to the dark city? Please? Hmm. I'm sorry. The fields were whispering to me. I didn't quite hear what you were saying. Could you try it again? You must play a focus now. I was wondering if you would possibly be willing to give us a ride to the city? Maybe there's something we could do in exchange? Oh, if you would like, you can come back to my homestead with me. I can introduce you to my husband. And perhaps you two could work something out. He does make trips to the city often. I think that's reasonable. What do you guys think? We can either find other sources of payment or Minowin. I don't see any reason why you would have to be the one to pay for the group. Well, I guess we're heading to the fields of Fleshland. Joy. So. Sounds fine with me. I don't think there's a pleasant place in this hellhole. Unfortunately, there not. really isn't. It's kind of designed that way. Uh, well, guess if you would have been a f oh. properly afraid enough in life, maybe you wouldn't be so foolish to end up here in death. Oh, come now. I, I do have some good cakes and other desserts at my, at my homestead I can give you to eat, and I consider it a good place amongst the rest of this darkness. Sounds good to me. Can I insight check that last bit? Sure, go ahead. May I also insight that last bit? Go for it. It'll be a 15 for Koji. Once again, she's believing oh, she... what she's saying. Rodon got a nat 20. Hmm. Okay. Got a solid 5. So as far as I'm concerned, she's the nicest lady I've ever met. Nicest lady you ever met in hell? Yes, that. There's only so many. Mm. If we go to this home of yours, home of hers, rather, I'll turn back to the group. And um, we rest there, or we make a deal to cross this bridge. Um, you all see Rodon, as he's still eating this pie, kind of pick a piece of the meat out of his mouth and throw it to the floor and just kind of look up with a startling amount of concern on his face. Yes. Is everything okay, you Rodon, dearie? <clears throat> you never said what meat this was. Oh, my husband raised it. Oh, the butcher ate it. Always well, uh, no. knows how to get the scales out. Scales? Mm. Scales of what? As Koji looks very green through his red. Dra Dragonborn, dearie. It's all the rage. <laughs> I just 
Nice. I look at Prism. Prism. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm crazy, but I have standards. That's fucked up. That's not right. Uh, as I put down the pie. As Koji will go behind a tree and... and uh, <sighs> expel what he consumed. The Larian you, simply continues eating. You go to vomit and nothing's coming up. It's like it's staying in your gut. No. Mm. Mm. Oh. Not the first time one of my kind has been slaughtered in such a way. Won't be the last, but we will get revenge for them. I. If you all follow me this way, I lead you towards my house. Excellent, thank you. And she starts walking down, down the uh, walkway. You can see that the, the trees, left and right, are made of bone and nail. Now, and... when you say nail, I don't suppose you mean iron nails. No, I do not. Mm. You can see, as you're going forward, these bones and the limbs, limbs sprouting like wild flora from the ground, clawing left and right all around, scratching and tearing into each other. There's no screams, no sounds of voices, just aimless flailing and the sound of nails and nails digging through flesh. As you continue to walk, you see a small wooden cottage backed up against the river, river of red, river of blood. There is a 15 foot wide bridge marking across it. And you see, finally, a minotaur whose one horn is broken off, the other shining and waxed, working at a metal table, hacking away at the leg of something that's already been skinned. Well, that was a quick trip. Are you guys doing anything during this time, before you get there? Three is resisting the urge to go up to one of the trees and try to figure out if it's something he can reach the- Gorsuch is intentionally quiet and observational, standing back towards the back of the group, arms crossed, eyes scanning her uh, situational companions and um, her guide. Manowin is kind of choking back tears a little bit as she takes in the, the cursed nature of the scenery and her hands are kind of balled into fists and she, her, she's digging her nails into her palms. OG is just rifling through the deck of illusions reviewing the cards he has left his uh, bottom teeth bared um, every once in a while reaching for the scar on his neck oh uh, Yuri Yuri I, I brought company as you see the minotaur turn and look at you all ah uh, yes thank you Lonely. Um, I can take it from here good to meet you all my name is Yuri. And you see Elon, we head inside, and you can see in the window her putting an apron on and getting to work on baking some more pies. I swallow as I see that. Very forceful. Now, I presume, like so many before, that you all seek to find the Dark City. Are that we that obvious? Seems to be the case, whether we like it or not. Well, it is a common goal amongst those who have uh, come to live within these lands. It sure is. Now, I do have a toll. One arm, one leg. The entire group and you may cross that bridge. Will you accept anything else? Well, come to think of it. There is a rather troublesome individual. It's going to give me quite a bit of it problem. Simply get them to leave my and my wife's land and business alone. You may cross. Are we free to 
solve this problem any way we see fit. Absolutely. Quick follow-up. Is fair. it possible to kill something in this realm? Absolutely. And is it like killing anything in the mortal realm, or is there special requirements since we're somewhat yes. dead already? Yes, you must consume the heart that of which you wish to kill. Right. Otherwise it will come back. Um, good to know. Mm. Good to know. What if we brought you the heart and you got to consume it yourself? Fine by me. How long does it take things to reform if you decide that you're not the heart-eating type? Depends on how violent this was. Understood. What type of trouble is he causing you? Well, he comes in, finds my livestock, and then turns them into pineapples, knowing full well that my wife is allergic to pineapples. I'm sorry. It's Wait, that actually, that actually kind of is fucked up. But why? Allergies still work here? <laughs> I don't... Would you say she's deathly allergic, or just like a mild rash? No, it causes the throat to swell up, and the worst part is, since we're already dead, she can't die from it, she just can't breathe. Right. So she just gets to suffocate until the reaction goes away. There you have it. Now you understand why it's troublesome. Um, mm. well then. Perhaps this alternative payment is not so unpleasant after all. Where do we find this troublesome individual? He lives in a small track, only a quarter of a mile to our east from here. And he points the direction. What's stopping you from killing him yourself? Easy. Every time that I've gone to confront him at his home, he shows up here. Unfortunately, that's actually kind of clever. Fortunately, indeed. Well, I suppose... We have a job to do then. Yeah, I think a good solution just got. Can I roll before we depart? Can I roll an insight check on? Is it Uri? Yuri. Yuri. Yes. Is, he, is there any ice around for Yuri? That is eleven. No, there's no Yuri on ice going on here. What was your insight? That was eleven. Um, he just seems rather irritated and agitated. That is, things keep getting fucked with. Any pineapples out here? Like, is there any left over? No, oh, I've incinerated all the last batch. A shame. I, I don't have minor illusion. Dang it. Um, all right. Never mind then. If you'd like, you all can make me a perception check. Okay. Very well. Will do. Not to buy strong suit, but we'll give it a go. Four, 14. 14 as well. Mm-hmm. 13. With Fox. Not 20 for 26. 11. I got a 21. We got a 19. All of you are able to see that the bridge is completely unguarded. Nothing there to connotate any kind of protection against you crossing. And on top of that, the way you're positioned, you all have a good feeling like you could make a sprint for it and just cross. Delarian, you on the other hand, see all these same things, but in addition, you see many a body that's floating in the blood river, bobbing along down the river. We would like to make an arcana check to see if there's any kind of spells or curses or anything on the bridge. Go for it. There's no way that that bridge is free to cross. Seems to be. Not easy. a fucking chance in the world. Is that... 17. Ah, fuck it. I'm gonna run to the bridge. Oh, that's not a good idea, dear. Dear. Right. Make an athletics check. Okay. Oh, uh, there we go. There goes Rodon. It was nice knowing you. Uh, could I make an appeal for an athletics? This should be an athletics check, because you're sprinting. Okay. Nine. You see Rodon take off, kind of slowly, and you see Yuri just kind of watch as Rodon gets to the bridge, 
and right when Rodon's about to take a step onto the bridge, it goes face first into the Blood River, fading right through the wooden bridge, hitting the uh, hitting the blood. Well, that answers my question. Um, <laughs> can I go to the edge of the bridge? How far down is it, Rodon? The, yes, about, that. about eight feet. And Rodan, I need you to make a constitution saving throw, too. Um, Nazel will also go to the edge of the bridge. Sounds good. Let's see. Oh, you, it was a 16. You gotta be fucking kidding me. 10. As you manage to cling to the side, you feel something burrow into your ears. Through your ear socket, through the corner of your eyes, deep into the tissue underneath. You feel your eyes bold in the head of you. You see everything can become distorted and fuzzy and red. And then there's a loud pop and you can no longer see. Um, Oji, Menuhin, you see Rodon clinging to the edge of the bank. I, blood can I... running down the face and no eyes in the socket. Can I use a use mage hand? to deliver my rope and place it, like, palm with the mage hand, palm the rope into Rodon's hands. Sure. And then, make, someone make, help me... Make what? it, make a, make a dexterity saving throw, please. A dexterity saving throw? Correct. That's a 15. You managed to finagle the, the rope using the mage hand in yourself into Rodon's hands. Rodon, you feel the, this rope in your hands. That's fine. Yep, I'm gonna climb back up. All right, someone stronger eat. than me, please hold the other end of the rope. Gorsuch, Gorsuch will help. Rodon. Ah! Rodon takes six piercing damage and eight necrotic. Oh, that's my temp HP. Fuck. Uh, I got a potion about this. I can. Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm gonna drink. A you're still potion of cure. You're still oh, in I'm the, still. So I'm still make, not make, in a good spot. Make an athletics check to pull Rodon up. DC is twelve. Me or the others? The others. Um, since there's two people pulling, one person can roll with advantage. Can I ah, help. give guidance to someone? Absolutely. I'm sorry. What kind of check did you say? A athletics check. To pull Rodon out of the out of the river. That's a net twenty for twenty three. I'll give some guidance seven. to Scree, who doesn't as strong as Gorsuch. You pull Rodon up. And Rodon clings to the side of the bank and climbs all the way up and rolls over onto his back, spits out blood. You can see very small worm-like creatures wriggling around in the blood. You hear Yuri behind you. <laughs> what were you thinking? Like, honestly, what were you thinking? In my defense, I wasn't. <laughs> really a common trait for him. Um, I will use prestidigitation to um, remove the remaining blood from Yuri. Or not Yuri, sorry. From the idiot, uh, Rodon. And uh, say... Next time, don't assume that unguarded bridges are unguarded. Got it. Uh, Rodon, c come here. I'm, I'm going to try something. Just okay. Let the magic flow through you. Uh, and I'm going to cast command on Rodon. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm not going to willingly fail that. Trust, no, trust me. Just let this... Trust me. Just trust me. Ooh. All right. I'm going to willingly forego the save because I can't fucking see. Okay, so he fails. So I get to make a one word command. Okay. I look at Pris I look at Rodan and I go, See! Rodan, ooh. You feel a weird sensation in your hands. A loud, flopping wet sound. Your skin mm -hmm. ripping through your fingers Any of that. as you're able to see from your hands. As all of you are able to see now that Rodon now possesses an eye 
at the end of each figure. Mm. Rodon. Less ideal. Um. Honestly, he's probably going to enjoy that much more. I'm of two minds about it, personally. Uh, mm. Mm. It really sucks that I cannot vomit in this round. As a Koji will walk away and just let the rest of that rope fall into the bloody river. Three kind of looks left and right to make sure no one's watching him, and then just kind of starts pecking at the worms on the ground a little bit. Making a constitution saving throw. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend eating those. They kind of fucked up my eyes, but I can see you're already doing that. Same thing. What was your saving throw, Scree? Assuming I rolled correctly, I got a two. Oh, that's not great. Um, you, your stomach feels very upset. As uh, you're going to take uh, four necrotic damage. I'm not healing you as well. I can't help it. It's instinct. It's okay. Don't eat the worms. Don't eat the pie. Don't eat anything here, in fact. I think it's all a mistake. Mm. You all think you could take care of this problem for me, and I can let you cross my bridge. Yes, I think you can take care of the problem. Seems fair. But we're going to ask them questions too, and if you turn out to not be on the up and up, we'll make arrangements with the other guy. Maybe don't tell him that, Kruji. Hey, I tried lying all my life, and I ended up here. I'm trying something different, okay? I think you still might want to use that skill there, but that's just me. I mean, it was meant to be an intimidation tactic, but I guess... Never mind, let's just go. Fox tried to intimidate the Minotaur? Hey, I am a very intimidating individual, by the way. Not very sly oh, for a fox. Oh, idea. Oh! I... That would be a 24 intimidation check. <laughs> you see him kind of shift himself a little bit. I'd be careful where you sling, sling those threats. They will not always land on welcoming ears. I will take your advice for what it is. A threat. What do y'all do? Scree face palms. Well, we better we better go find this guy if we ever want to get to the dark city. That sounds good to me. He kind of goes up and puts his hands on Koji's shoulders to turn him around and kind of marches him away from the Minotaur towards the direction they have to go before he gets himself crushed. Koji just sort of is Koji's already turned around and left after the threats. Oh, even better. Right. You all head towards the direction that Yuri pointed out for you. You were walking for quite some time. Through the fields you can see the limb trees flailing around, clawing and tearing at each other. You can see a pathway made of less to be bone. Nothing else makes sense. It looks like cobblestone, but it has the coloration and texture of bone. You see this walkway and at the end of it a small wooden shack. A tower rises out of the back of it leaning oddly misshapen, held up by support beams that are askew far to the left right and back. It looks like one small breeze could blow this place over. What do you all do? I can confirm that that guy is at the top of the tower. We could probably just take out one of the support beams and just kind of end them. As smart as that sounds, I think that might be a little too easy for this place. We might want to talk to him first. I mean, changing stuff, flesh into pineapple to bother an allergy is honestly kind of hilarious. Let's be honest. Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a bit it's a bit rude, um, quite mean actually, considering the side effects of the allergy. But um, I also don't trust the Minotaur and his flesh pie making wife. So perhaps we get to the other side of the story. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do agree with Kuji. Why is it so hard to agree with me? 
You just always... Well, Have you met you? You have yes. a tendency to lose your head. <laughs> uh, How tall is Koji as well? Uh, Koji is five foot eight. Okay. <laughs> so Koji, who called Naza short, stands one inch taller than Ko- Koji and kind of looks down at him a little. Yes, but you're short for a good need. Well, I'm taller than you, and that's what counts, right? Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I will admit in life I was a shifty, uh, conniving, lying cheat. But I didn't get caught. So, um, and, yet and you're I still can talk. Here with us. And yet I'm still here with you. But I did talk my way out of a lot of really tough situations. Once again, not this one, but I only lose my head when I get teleported randomly into a shack and that is being actively attacked by a horde of orcs. Hey, what are you all characters doing here? You walked out of your story! As you see a goblin walk out with this weird looking banana hat on, wielding this weird looking staff that you can see has what looks to be an image of a pine tree on a piece of string that's dangling from the corner. I firebolt him. Right, roll initiative then. Okay. Uh, (laughs) I'm sorry, y'all. For the love of the doll, Rodon! Is there any way- (laughs) Wait, are you casting- Are you casting this out of your hand that has all of your eyeballs on it? Yep. (laughs) 16. 14. Rode on. And I'm the one who you don't agree Sorry. with? Yeah, they shouldn't have been giving Koji that much shit. Koji, what'd you get? I got an 8. <laughs> My, I rolled don't think we don't, can't give both of you shit, alright? Naza, what'd you get? An 11. 11? Listen, we need an arm and a leg. Uh, uh, Rodon, what'd you get? 10. 10. Scree, what'd you get? 16. 16? Okay. And Prism, if you said yours, I didn't hear you. Hear you. If you, you might 14. be muted. 14. 14. Oh. All right. So, Rodon, roll to hit. Okay. I got a 10. Oh, that wasn't very good. That was a 14. Yeah, I got you, Delaney. A 14? Yeah. 14, 14 will miss. As you see okay. him kind of just dodge out of the way, he's like, Beauty, you can use a cat trip on me. You should know better. Did you even read the fucking monster manual? Oh, you have a spare the copy. Pineapple guy wants to tell me how to cast spells. He's clearly better at you if he can turn a whole creature into a pineapple. <laughs> oh, Rodan just hit me. Oh, are you the one turning people into pineapples? There any other stupid questions? Didn't you listen to the story? What story are you possibly talking about? These are our lives! Also, or- there are no stupid questions, just stupid people who ask questions. Like Rodon! Alright, alright. Now, I only have one question for you. Why, in the blazes, did you look out of your story to come fight me? It makes no sense. All of the cards for you, and don't do anything out of the ordinary. Um, my apologies. Out of the ordinary, and then Koji will just sort of tip his head. See, that's ordinary. You were given a gimmick, and you're living up to it. How does the narrative work exactly? Easy. You go in the path that was set for you to the dark city. You get your souls corrupted, you get there, and you realize you can't leave because you're already monsters. Oh, what if, what if, instead of that, we get to the Dark City, don't let our souls get corrupted, and shove our swords so far off Darnzor's arse that it won't shine till Mon- uh, Tommen Day? It's easy, because you're not the ones that get to deceive him. Sneak up for another 
798 years? I really don't feel like believing in fate today. It's not fate. It's a damn plot line. Make a book. You seem to know a lot about the narrative of our lives. And I imagine... Rodon, this man is more off his rocker than you are. Just shoot him again. Let's not All shoot I was going to say no. was... I imagine this ends with his arm and leg in our possession. Then, well, Borzich, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna go up with your initiative and use the initiative order now. All right, you said Gorzich. Yep, Gorzich, you're up first. All right. Um, well, Gorzich really has no reason to damage this little guy, but um, she's got her friends and this area or this place is well scary so everything else is a foe I'll use bonus action to steady aim which gives me uh, advantage on my next attack and then I'll take a shot with my three shot flintlock I'll take three shots I should say the first one with advantage okay Uh, that's a 16 to hit Uh, that will hit oh great that is Eight damage plus sneak attack, uh, another eleven, so a grand total of nineteen on the first shot, mm-hmm. and then two more shots. That's a twenty-five to hit and a uh, nat one, so I assume that's a miss um, for an additional eleven damage. Yep. Okay. As uh, Gorsuch pulls out her her revolver, which is uh, three. Instead of a chamber and a single barrel, it's three barrels tight together. She uh, pulls it in her left hand and uh, steadies her left left wrist on her right forearm and uh, pulls the trigger tight and doesn't release as three quick shots fire out. East, east, hit the first critical. Oh, spoiler like when you do it like that. Yeah, watch this. And it's now Gordon's turn. And starting off first, I need all of you uh, to make a wisdom saving throw. I'd rather not. All of you. Oh, dirty oh. 20. Natural 19 for a 19. Natural okay. 1. 3. No, Gorsuch. That's two in a row. <laughs> 14. Okay. I got a 25. Okay. For everyone below an 18, here's what happens. As rippling fear enters your body, your whole self is compacted. You feel your bones munching up together, becoming mulch within your own skin. Stretched tight, you feel yourself flimsy, falling to the floor. A piece of parchment laying on the ground with naught but ink and numbers to illuminate who you truly are. Each of you are able to see your names illuminated in a set of numerical digits to detail who you are in its entirety. As each of you take 17 psychic damage and are all frightened. Three just KO'd. Six. What about those yeah. of us who say you started combat? True madness. Uh, those who succeeded, nothing happens. Do we witness the others turning into you character do. sheets? You do. Yes. Oh, Lord. What? And that brings us up to Menowin. You're up. Uh, with all due respect, DM, I'm a piece of paper. What exactly can I do right now? You can make a wisdom saving throw again. That'll be a 17. You are still a character sheet. Well, that's the end of my turn then, isn't it? Scree? Scree's knocked out. You notice that Scree's character sheet is on the floor, slowly tearing in half. Make a death saving throw for me, please. That's just a d20, right? Yep. Plus con mod. I'm sorry, which mod? Constitution. For a death save? No, not only only if you had the proficiency. So it should just be a flat twenty roll for you, Scree. Oof. Is that a is that a nat one? Yep. 
That's oh, two no. failures right there. Oh, no. Love. Oh. And that'll that'll bring us up to prism. So can I do any actions while I'm a sheet, or just make a saving throw? You can make a saving throw, or you can also do anything that is technically non-physical. If you have something in mind that you'd like to try to do, just let me know, and I can let you know whether or not you can actually do it. Can't do anything with verbal components. Can't do anything with somatic components. Obviously, can't do anything with material components. Yeah, yeah. But I can lay on hands myself. I would. I would say that requires the somatic component of touching. And hands. I mean, would I not be considered touching myself? All my molecules are touching. No, you would not. This man can turn us into sheets of paper, but the, can I, <laughs> we, we, the molecule wait. argument won't work. <laughs> I can. I do have 30 feet of telepathy. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can still use that. Yes. Um, so I will just kind of talk to those people like, do we really want to fight somebody that can turn us into paper? It seems like a lost wow. cause. I'm regretting many choices. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you've definitely made some stupid fucking decisions today. I also regret Rodon's choices. Uh, Mr. Mr. Banana Goblin. Yeah, my name's Ordung. Ordung Booyag. Or... Ordung Booyag. Yes. Um, listen, I'm going to be honest. We were sent by some Minotaur in the Flesh Weaver. Because you've been turning... <laughs> yeah, mate, you yeah, you've been turning their quote-unquote stock into pineapples. He just wants you to stop. Is there a way we can get hmm. you to stop that doesn't resort to violence on both sides? Don't you see that if you guys stop, if I don't, and then it matters, it's all meaningless. I only exist as long as you're here. Once you leave, I don't exist anymore. So it doesn't really even matter. This is all something fabricated up by some eldritch being in the sky who wants to make me seem wicko. I see right through them. I see right through them. Well, listen, so we worry. need... They can't control me. They control myself. Listen, we need Yuri to exist long enough to let us cross his silly little phantom bridge thing. So could you do us a solid and just not fuck with his pineapple or his things for a while. Make a persuasion check. And I'll tell you what, we'll even we'll even let you punch the guy who threw a firebolt at you one more time. And I I want to make a persuasion. Fair, you can punch me if you want to. Can I make it with advantage now that we can? I, uh... <laughs> yeah, go for it, Prism. I just don't want to be a piece of fucking paper. That's my one... Okay, that's a 24. Like, I'm not be almost dead. All right. I have a price. And Name your price. Is... When you get to the dark city, wants you to find the Eldritch Horror. On you, saw the strings. Find the Eldritch Horror, sever the strings. Got it. Uh, can we? Seems fair to me. Can we not be paper anymore, please? Yep, yeah, sure. He snaps his fingers, and when he does, all of you are poofed back into your bodies. I run over Rodon, to... Rodon, you have your eyes back in your sockets. Oh, fuck. Uh, mm. Thanks, Paper Nanner Man. Uh, who uh, was it that was down and injured? Three. I, is three. I immediately run over to them and give them ten points of lay on hands. Three is very grateful. Oh. I do have one question. Delarian! I see that the mistress has been really cruel to you. You stole with me. Put our strings together. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand the goblin voice. The, the goblin's asking if you want to stay with them and cut the strings that the mistress has placed upon you. Absolutely. Oh, good, good. Yes, we can, we can be free, free under control of our own lives outside of their twisted imaginations. 
This goblin is all of us from main campaign to Vivian. You have my word. I won't be turning any more of Yuri or the bitch's produce into pineapples. And you will uh, seek out the eldritch whore that is the mistress of hamstrings. Myself and Delarian included. Sound good? There's a chance we could get that in writing in case Yuri doesn't just believe us. Sure, we get you got a piece of paper. <laughs> no, no one got any parchment. So let me see if I can spell on some. If we are just people in a story, I should be able to have parchment right here just by thinking about it, right? You have parchment right there without even thinking about it. Gosh dang it! Um, mm, that was not supposed to work as a proof of point. Here you go. I didn't understand. No, I didn't understand. And he writes the uh, note, and it's all in Goblin. Oh wait, guys, I can just that? mimic fry the message. I um. Mm, all right then. Thank you. Uh, we will be going now, and we will be cutting the strings. I assure you, I have no desire to be controlled by anyone. Agreed. Oh, very long. I have an existence to feed from. Um, right. Scree, are you s holding up all right now? Or how are the rest of you? Should we take a break at the... at the old lady's house, perhaps? Yes, that's... break would be a... I, I myself haven't used any of my uh, <clears throat> magic up, but the rest of you look like you could use it for sure. Galarian. I'm Delarian. We two we were taking a racer and some will to that uh, tragic black story of yours. I can't wait. I'm so tired of running. Scurry along, you all. <laughs> Seeing ya. All right, I guess we go back to Yuri's. We go back to Yuri's. Without Delarian. Delarian staying with the creepy fourth wall breaking goblin. What do you all do as you walk back? Rodon, new rule. Um, yeah. you wait until mm, Prism. You wait until Prism says fire to cast Firebolt. Rodon isn't really hearing as he's looking around. Um, I imagine hearing all this stuff about rewriting his story. He keeps seeing the image of someone he used to love uh, around. He's a bit out of it right now. I suppose whether he was crazy or not, the story we tell with our lives really is ours to write. Or it should be. In a an ideal world, one would like to think so, but Well, best I can tell we were all sucked in through a portal that we didn't even know existed to a world we didn't know existed to be murdered by an army that we didn't know existed and end up in a plane of death. So, sometimes you play the To be you fair, die. I knew this place existed. Just This this place, sure. But, I mean, you know. I mean, I, I get the point that Gorgeous is trying to make here. We, we were all brought here rather against our wills to, mm. I guess as the goblin said, tell somebody else's story for... Their bemusement, uh, a um, a character at the at the end of some sort of fantastical puppet show or stage play. Well, after we kill Talanzor, we can kill them too. How does that sound? I just I want to tell a different story than the one I've been telling. Well, as long as you keep acting that way, I'm certain. Your strength of will, as shown by your recent acquiring of parchment, shows that you are capable of altering reality. You know. Keep it up. And then... Rodon, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Scree, oh, no. you as well. It's an 18. Wait, did you say Scree as well? Yes, Scree as well. 16. Rodon, you take two necrotic damage, and Scree... 
you take four. Mm. As you're still feeling extremely icky from those worms, those parasitical invaders of your body. Rodan, you feel your skin starting to wither, become tight. Almost like your visage is changing around you. Can I make an arcana check to see if casting some kind of healing magic would help with this? Go for it. It's a 22 on the arcana. You feel as this is the parasites, yes. Some kind of healing might help there, but the skin, it's something else entirely. Like, the energy of this plane is changing you. I'm gonna down a potion of cure wounds to see if I can burn out as many of these worms as I can. All right. I get six back. Okay. Mm, you are cured in the blood worm parasite. With the cure wound spell, do we see the um, that the magic is drawn from the ichor? Yes, you do. You can see the faint outline of black, like a stain on the hands of the caster. In Rodon, was the other person infected? Cree was the other person infected. Uh, I'm good I now. will walk over to Scree. Scree, darling. Here, and I'm going to put my hands slowly on their back. And uh, with my lay on hands pool, I can expend 5 HP to either cure disease or neutralize a post poison affecting the creature would i be able to expel these worms with the use of that make an arcana check to see if you can discern at the at meanwhile Ko koji will give a sideways glance at rodon's uh, black hands as he cures himself prism you feel as though it might work but you are a little more confident that a little more a little more power a little more mm, behind it might be necessary. Sure, I'll mm. I'll use my remaining ten points and double down on it then. Mm -hmm. Scree, you are healed for ten, and you are cleared of the blood worm parasite. Scree makes a grateful squawking kind of noise. Uh, thank you, Prism. I really appreciate it. Can I roll a check to see if I can tell a difference between when Rodon cast the cure wounds via his potion and when Prism is using their lay on hands? Sure, make an arcana check. I um, am not a sly fox, as was pointed out earlier. I rolled a four. You're not really able to pick up on any keynote differences. Of Are we all set to take a rest at the home of... Oh, at the home of Yuri and his wife. You think they're going to be mad? We don't have an arm and a leg. Probably. Rodon, we they directly take care of it. They we directly care. negotiated an alternative form of payment. Fair. I'm still just thinking about the sheets of paper. That it's it's just so much. I don't know. Not I every mean, story requires. Broke. Didn't we say we'd come back with a heart for Yuri? Uh, if we, we said we would handle the situation. And we were told we could handle it however we wanted. I have oh, my doubts. No. If, if... Maybe we change the narrative. Maybe we can change the narrative. As insane as that is, I suppose... Well, we also have proof that... The goblin said he would stop, so that, hopefully that's good enough. Yeah. Hopefully it's good enough. We have proof that he said he would stop. We don't have proof that he's actually going to. Uh, oh, pardon the pun, but perhaps we cross that bridge when we come to it? Do you all decide to do? I say if the goblin said he would stop and then he doesn't stop, Yuri is perfectly within his right to just smash the goblin. Yes, that does sound fair. All right. Um, well, let's at least figure out what the, their next course of action is, and then we can determine our next course of action. That seems like a good plan. I um, guess we head back. As you all approach the homestead near the riverbank, you can see Yuri 
working at the metal workbench again. This time, carving a clean rack of ribs. You can see him, he's got a bit of hickory paste. He's glazing with it. You can see a fire burning not too far away. There's a spit roast over top. Nothing currently on it. But you can ascertain that it's meant for the ribs that Yuri is preparing. What do you all do? We want to rest here before crossing the bridge for an hour or two. I think we should talk to Yuri and make sure everything's okay before we make the rest. Ahoy there, Yuri! Greetings. How was your confrontation with Bordog? Um, you are one less. Quite enlightening. I must say so. We did, though, acquire a contract by which he will cease transforming your stock into pineapples. Well, not exactly the solution that I thought you would come up with, but it will suffice. It meets our details of our arrangement. Would you all like to stay for dinner? I think... For just an hour, maybe. Some of our friends did not come out of our um, meeting unscathed. Well, you all would like to eat. My ribs can do wonders when it comes to healing. One of the few things here in the spiraling black that will allow you to recover your health. Well, I'll let each make their own choice, but... um. I will summon um, Cinder, my horse, if okay. I can, without climbing on him. You do? And uh, yeah, you. I, if he could have some, I suppose he might be hungry. Do you eat? Yes, I do. Thank you. Excuse me, Yuri? Yes. Eat are those ribs? This one here, it's... The half orc. Why do you ask? Three who was considering kick glances over at uh, Gorzic and quickly changes his mind on eating those ribs. Gorzic sort of looks down at the ground because <laughs> still shaken from her uh, sort of metaphysical nightmare of knowing the truth. Um, was considering indulging herself, but now cannot. Don't like it, but I'll take it. Prism will definitely eat the, the ribs. She doesn't get meat very often. There you go. See, it sets you up with, uh, sets you two up with plates. And there's also some ears of corn and a piece of cornbread. For those of you who do not eat mm -hmm. meat, you know, feel free to have some corn and some cornbread. Now, when it you say it of corn... <laughs> God damn it. I'm sorry. Are we making fun of uh, my particular kind of uh, diet? No, we're just making a joke about how everything is... Pe people here, so when you say ear... In the general sense, yes, an ear of corn is... You know, just corn, but, you know... The, con the context. Where was the corn raised, may I ask? Here, in my fields. In in the fields of flesh. Yes. See, he decides that he's not not bad. not in a place called Iowa. No. The fuck is an Iowa? I think it is an acronym. I don't know what it stands for though. I only want away. Idiots out walking around. <laughs> a few minutes ago, I had no Iowas, so I <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat the ribs. Meadowin's gonna um, sit down at the. I'm assuming there's a table. I guess. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna sit down at the table and I'll I'll have I'll have some corn and and some cornbread, please. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me hand you a plate. There you go. 
I must thank you for your expedience in helping with the situation. Bordong has been a thorn in my side for years. Yeah, well, he, he was an interesting one, Wallace says before he starts working on eating an ear of corn in a kind of pecking at it in a bird like manner. Those who ate of the uh of the ribs and regain one D six hit points. Those who ate of the corn and cornbread can regain exactly one hit point. Was that much sorry, my headphones cut out. One D six for ribs, one hit point exactly for cornbread. Do they get to take a exam uh roll hit die as well? Yes, for the short rest you get to roll hit die. During the meal um Ah, never mind. Um, Naza, who would have tried to not eat, but the more she's seeing the food, can't help but have some, so she would have indulged in some cornbread. I will, uh, Koji would have allowed his horse to make the, his choice. Yeah, you, I am here your, hor- your, your horse just digs in for some ribs, bowing down. And as you all have rested up and eaten, Yuri kind of looks at you all and says, Well, I have made the bridge solid. You can cross whenever you feel like. Just know, once you cross, the bridge will be as it was before. Visual, but not there. Mm. Thank you. Horse. All right. Onward toward the dark city. I guess so. Yeah. On our way to become monsters. For those of us who aren't weren't some already. Well, perhaps not. Would we be here if we weren't? I wish I knew. As you all are walking, you got a decent amount of time that you're walking along. What are you all doing, or saying, or talking about, as you all are walking towards the dark city? Bree uh, mm-hmm. reaches into his pocket and pulls out a shiny button that he had found before all of this happened that just kind of stayed on him. And he walks up over to Prism and presents it to Prism. This is a thank you for, you know, saving my life. I really appreciate it. You don't have to do that. It's... But I do. But yeah, if but you in, if you I insist, how about how about a trade instead? And sure. I will pull out a small mirror and give it to them. I see you have a fondness for shiny things, so here's one of the shiniest things I own. Three hands prism the button and takes the mirror and kind of starts playing around with it and lets out a delighted squawk. It's like, I love it. I'll treasure it. Wonderful. I suppose after an about an hour of silence or so, um, Koji will find Naza again and start by just sort of looking down and he'll reach into his pouch and hold something there. When I said I knew Gnid because I had visited school there and I suppose it's probably obvious now that I didn't visit with good intentions uh, I guess this could be assumed uh, Koji will pull out what is a stolen uh, Gnid artifact from his pouch I I took this off of a shaman while uh, the children were admiring one of my shows. It, um, I never found a fence that could get it all, uh, get uh, get it off my hands for any price. I suppose if if I'm not going to be a monster by the time I, or at least more of one, by the time we reach this city, I better start putting things back where they belong. And uh, Koji will just sort of hand Naza the artifact and then. Walk off. Rodon. Yes. Within your, within your head. No one else can hear this, but you do. Did you see her in the trees? She was looking at us. Mm. Uh, 
Why did we do it? Why? We had happy. Why did we do it? It was a mistake. No. A mistake is something we regret. We were happy. We were really happy. I regret it. Rodon regrets it. But we don't. No. No, no, we don't. We live for it. We treasure it. We still keep it in wow. mm -hmm. As you feel something gunky, slimy in your mouth, mm -hmm. you kind of wrote on, spit it yeah. out. You spit out a whole ear into your hand. You remember. You remember the way she was breathing. The way that she wailed. The way that she trembled. Do you remember? No, we do. <laughs> I, I guess we do. Well, now it's time to end it. Now it's time to close the book. Now it's time to end it. Or may you want to. <laughs> Rodon um, was going to look over some of his potions and as he pulls one out he sees his own reflection casted back at him and immediately pulls back um, and you see a young boy with a face filled with fear and regret and shame as he sees the reflection of his own face as you all Come to a stop. You see a mountain of book powering up on it. And right at the base of it, a woman. She wears a red long sleeve tunic, chestnut brown hair and bright blue eyes. She's the most lively thing you've seen in this realm of the dead. And yet she's sorrowful, sad withering away surrounded by her books she looks up at you i'm sorry i'm so sorry what what exactly are you sorry for it's all my fault all of it i thought everyone would like it i didn't think about what the consequences were all of what darling what happened you all and that's where in tonight's session <laughs>